Hey there fellow X100V camera enthusiasts, are you looking to amp up your camera game with some new accessories? Well then, this video is for you. Before you hit that add to cart button, you might want to hear which accessories are worth investing in and which ones you should skip. In this video, we'll dive into the world of X100V accessories and explore which ones enhance your camera's performance and which ones are just purely aesthetic. And let's face it, if you're buying an X100V, you're not really buying it for its average camera specs. This camera is all about aesthetics and incredible user experience. But do these accessories really make a difference? Stick around and let's find out. All right, so the first accessory we're gonna talk about is this lens hood by JJC. And before I get started, all the accessories I'm talking about today will be linked down below in the description. So if you wanna help out this channel, there are affiliate links, you can pick something up. It doesn't cost you anything more, but it helps out the channel a little bit. So I thank you in advance for that. So this is the, uh, where's the, the JJC lens hood. And if you own an X100V, I say that this lens hood is absolutely mandatory. You should buy this and I'll tell you why. Um, well, obviously you have the lens hood and then you have the base plate and it's this base plate, which is the important thing. JJC makes this uh Fuji also makes this as well, and there's other third-party brands that make this too. So depending on what, how much money you want to spend, who you want to buy it from, what brand you want to buy, you can go on Amazon and you can look around. JJC makes this in black and silver. And the first thing you got to do is you got to take off this little ring here that sits on the front of the camera, and then you can attach the lens hood like so. And the thing that makes this little lens hood piece so important is the fact that this camera, the X100V, is completely weather sealed except for the front element. The front lens, when you focus, will protrude. It'll go in and out, and that little area is a little spot where water can get into your camera and damage it. So the thing is, you wanna have this little adapter on here so that you can screw on a filter onto the front of your camera, and when you have a filter screwed onto the front of your camera, your camera is now waterproof, so you can go shoot in the rain and have some fun. You don't have to worry about it, and I've shot in heavy rain with this camera with the filter on, of course, and the camera's had no issues, so awesome. And the other benefit to using this filter is the fact that it gives you a 49 millimeter thread mount. So obviously you can put on a UV filter, a clear filter to protect your camera and keep it watertight, but you can also use specialty filters like star filters, glimmer glass filters, black pro mist filters. And if you have filters that are bigger than 49, you can also use these step up rings and you can attach it 49 to whatever your filter thread is. And you can use these step up rings to use other filters on your Fuji X100V. So that's pretty awesome. And of course, with this camera, it's all about creating those nostalgic kind of film looks and creating these cool moods and things like that. So filters are definitely a big part of the fun with this camera. The only thing to keep in mind though is that if you do use a step-up ring with this camera, keep in mind that the step-up ring will block the onboard flash. So if you want to shoot with flash, either get only 49 millimeter filters or get a flash that sits on top of the camera. And there's a bunch of those options out on the market too. So I'll talk about that in a future video, not this video. All right, next up, let's talk about this case. This is the case that uh, I bought this with the Fuji X100V as part of a package. This is the leather case made by Fuji for the X100V. Now there's other cases out there on the market. If you go on eBay or Amazon, you'll find other third-party brands make cases for the Fuji X100V. So whichever one you like, go for it. It's nice to have your camera protected. Like if you, let's say, throw your camera in the bag, put it in a case, throw the camera in the bag, take it with you. And then when you wanna use the camera, just take it out. Now, one thing I will mention with this case is when you take off the top cover, it doesn't clip onto the bottom of the case. It doesn't attach. So if you take it off, it comes off. And if you're walking around with it, you're going to have to put it in a pocket or put it somewhere because it doesn't clip to anything on the camera. Now, one of the nice things about this case is the fact that obviously you have a very slim camera here with the X100V. Ergonomics are, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a small camera. It feels small in the hands, but when you put the case on, it gives you just a little extra grippiness here on the, the grip, which allows you to hold the camera a little tighter. And uh, I like that. So I think for me, definitely, I would buy this case if I had to do it again. And the other thing that I love about this case, and the thing I hate about this Fuji camera is these little, I don't know what you would call them. This is where you put the strap on. And listen, every time you move the camera, oh, it drives me absolutely nuts. But if you put the case on, these little metal bits slide into the case and listen, it's a lot quieter and it's less irritating to use the camera and with, oh God. Yeah, anyway, those jingly bits I don't like and the case kind of solves the problem by keeping the camera quiet and also gives you a better grip and also gives you a little protective cover you can put on the camera when you throw it in your bag. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is if you want to use one of these little uh, shutter release screw on button thingies, 
The case doesn't seem to work with that. It just, it's too high and the top part doesn't fit. The bottom part fits fine. So yeah, let's talk about uh, this thing and why I think this thing is a waste of money. All right, so let's talk about this little piece here that screws onto the shutter release. It's like a little button or an extension to the shutter release. This thing is, it's kind of cool. I mean, it doesn't really change the camera in terms of usability. It's just a purely cosmetic thing. Makes the camera look kind of cool. It comes, it comes in different colors, different materials. You can buy brass, you can buy wood, you can get a red one, a black one, you can get one with the Fuji X symbol on it. There's tons of them. But the one thing that I find frustrating about this is if you touch it and rub it, it just comes right off, right? It just, the screw thread is so short, it's like a quarter turn to get it in there. Now, I don't know if the other brands that make these little um, shutter release buttons have longer threads or shorter threads or how it works. This is the only one I've ever tried, but it's literally a quarter turn to get it off. And if you walk by it or you brush against it, a little quarter turn, it unscrews and falls right off. Now, here's a little pro tip. If you have one and you really love it and you don't plan on taking it off often, you can get a little bit of clear nail polish and just put it there on the threads and screw it in and it'll hold tighter. Now, the nice thing with clear nail polish is, is that it's very brittle. So it'll hold in place for a while and when you wanna take it off, you can just turn it and it'll crack the nail polish and you can pull it off so it's not permanent, it's not like a glue, it's just like a very brittle adhesive. So that's a little pro tip if, uh, if you have problems with your little button thingy falling off. All right, so next up we have this thumb grip for the X100V and this is a very popular accessory. I see a lot of people using this. So what you gotta do is pull off the hot shoe plate on the X100V and then you slide this thumb grip in its place and it gives you a little place for your thumb to rest so you have a little more control over the camera. Now, in my personal opinion, after using this for a while, if you have the leather case on, this leather leather bump here gives you enough of a grip that you don't really need a thumb grip. Like it, it holds in your hand nice and tight. It, the, the leather case makes it a little more grippy. It's not gonna be as slippery. So if you have the leather case, you don't really need a thumb grip. But where the thumb grip comes in really handy is if you're using one of these attachment lenses. So this is the TCL, which converts your 35 millimeter into a 50 millimeter. And the thing with this lens is it makes your camera really front heavy, not really front heavy. I mean, it's not like an 85 1.2 or anything like that, but because there isn't much of a grip here, the weight of this lens kind of makes everything want to pull down. And without the thumb grip, it's kind of hard to keep everything balanced. So the thumb grip definitely helps if you have the TCL attachment on the front. Now, when it comes to this TCL attachment, I'm not gonna talk about it in this video. This is a pretty cool lens and um, I'm gonna make a full review video about this lens in a, in a future video. I just wanna get to know this a little bit more and spend some more time with it so I can learn the positives and negatives, the ins and outs, so I can give you a competent review instead of just opening it, taking it out of the box and be like, hey, this is a review. I don't know anything about it, but I'm gonna tell you about it, which I don't like doing. So that, will come up in a future video, but just know that if you want to buy the, the TCL or WCL attachment, the thumb grip will make it a lot easier to use because it'll allow you to hold the camera and keep it vertical or keep it level a little easier. So yeah, overall, I say if you have a leather case, you probably don't need this, but uh, if you want to attach your lenses on the front or flash maybe, even if you have a, Michael, I guess you, guess you can't. If you have a flash on top, this isn't the hot shoe. So yeah, no grippy grip for the thumb with a flash on top. But yeah, there you go. Last but not least, let's talk about the screen protector. Now, as a photographer, 19 years in the business, I have never used a screen protector on any of my cameras ever before. And I just like when you're shooting in studio, when you're shooting clients, headshots, portraits, weddings, things like that, you're generally taking care of your camera. The camera's on you all the time, but this X100V is more designed to be a carry around camera. So it's gonna be on a strap. It's gonna be bouncing off your chest, bouncing off your side. It's gonna be in camera pockets, camera pockets. <laughs> it's gonna be in jacket pockets. And this is the kind of thing that, that will happen. You'll scratch your screen. So I opted to go for the screen protector on this camera just because this is going to be kind of like a throw in your backpack and take it anywhere camera and the chances of it getting scratched up nicked up and all that kind of stuff is pretty high so uh yeah i thought the screen protector would be a good idea for this camera All right, and uh, if you're looking to buy accessories for your Fuji X100V or previous models, because all these accessories also work on the previous models as well, hopefully this video is helpful for you. If it was, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this stuff. And Fuji really hit the nail on the head with this camera. It is a handsome looking camera, right? Like this is a beautiful camera and it's a lot of fun to use. 
It's just the user experience is fantastic. You have all the buttons and dials on the outside. And like for professional, see the button just fell off. So for professional work, um, I use my R5 for that kind of stuff, but whenever I'm not shooting, like the Canon cameras are fantastic, but they're heavy and they're bulky and the lenses are big and it's work. But if I wanna play, if I just wanna go to the park, hang out with some friends, or every time I go out with family, I always bring this, it's in my backpack, it's in my pocket. I mean, without <laughs> this lens on the front, literally, if you're wearing baggy jeans, this will fit in your pocket. But uh, I guess the style right now is tight jeans, so uh, <laughs> good luck with that. But yeah, this camera, totally awesome. It's all about aesthetics. It's a beautiful camera. It's all about like an incredible user experience. It's a lot of fun. If you're thinking about picking up an X100V, I strongly recommend it. I think it's a fantastic camera. The only bit of like pro tip I would give you is Fuji just came out with a 40 megapixel APS-C X-Trans 5 sensor. Now these ones have the X-Trans 4 sensor, which is the older generation. I think it's around 26 megapixels and this attachment here, this lens, is designed for this camera at 26 megapixels. Now obviously, when this camera jumps up to 40 megapixels, it becomes a high resolution camera, and I don't know if this lens is a high resolution lens capable of delivering enough information to a 40 megapixel sensor. Now, until I test it out, I think the next Fuji X100 camera is probably gonna have that 40 megapixel sensor. So if you're thinking about buying some of these lens attachments, maybe hold off on it until the new Fuji X100 comes out, just so you know if these attachments will work with the new camera, especially if you're planning on upgrading to the new camera. But just a thought, just a thought. I mean, who knows? Who knows when the next X100V is gonna come out anyway, because nobody even knows what to Google for it, because you don't know what the next letter is gonna be. The X100 what? <laughs> All right, this accessories video is over. And remember, if you want to see my review of the TCL converter, definitely subscribe to the channel. I want to play around with this lens a little more before I make my review video. I don't really want to unbox it and review it right away. I want to get to know it and be uh, have a comprehensive understanding of what uh, the positives and negatives about this little lens are. And with that being said, thank you for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Would really appreciate it. Working hard to grow this channel. And of course, hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.